Good afternoon, and welcome to episode number 591. Countdown continues. Um, topic today is date someone your own age. So I thought I had some fun with this one, because basically this is something that I read a bit earlier, and it's been something on my mind for, for a while recently. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women. Excuse me, I'll say it again. I help strong, successful women, high-achieving women, in fact, create balance in love, life, and business. And I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which led to these talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today we're at episode number 500, 591. And the topic today is date someone your own age. I'm making that a question for a reason, because I don't want to make it a statement and declaration, because there's a lot of different opinions about this. But I want to speak to the extreme first. And I'm going to make this a fairly brief one because it, this, this may well be provocative. I don't know if I have the answers and I don't want to have the answers for this one because everyone's got their choices. So when I talk about this, it's more to give me something to think about. So the article I was reading was about this French guy. Um, he's an author or a poet or something. And he's, about, he's 50 years old and doesn't think he should date anybody older than 25. Yeah. <laughs> it bugs me. And I, and I said something, I'll say it this way when I get to that point. Hang on, let me back up before I jump to that. So there's a, this guy is looking to date someone half his age. And because of that um, caveat in his choices, there's two things I want to say. First of all, if someone's attached to dating someone at that age, not just being 25 years younger than him, but age 25 or younger, that means when they turn 26, they're no longer desirable to him which sounds really messed up. And that's part of it. The second part, though, which really gets me a little bit... Um, uh, what's the one looking for? <laughs> I'll say it this way. Um, I know a lot of people, people, both men and women, over a lot of age ranges, as probably m most of you do as well. Let's just say that with age comes maturity, most of the time, because there are some people who have age without maturity, and there are very, very few people who have maturity without the age. So just put that on the table. So having connection, having compatibility, having having a um, equality of, con of, of communion, for the sake of a better word, with someone who is not on the same page as you is very hard to do. And I watch people, and again, I'm using people as a generic term because I've seen men and women do this, date someone who's drastically different age than they are, and not have any compatibility. And they may be doing it because they're attached to a certain thing. I hate to be stereotypical, but I'll do it this way anyway, just to say this being stereotypical intentionally. As on one side of the coin, there are men who date pretty young women because they've got tight bodies and they're very cute. But there's, they're not very active yet in the um, consciousness level, I'll put it that way. And I'm, not, I'm saying this as general statements, please. I'm not like saying all women like this, please. Do not start shooting me with that one, because I'm not saying that. But also there are the women who date older men who've got it who already established, who've got the nice car and the nice house and all the money and stuff because they want the security and safety that's there too. But there's still no real connection. And if you watch my broadcast, any of the last 590 of them, most of them talk about having a sense of equality and connection and compatibility in partnership, which to me means dating someone, and actually I probably should change the title. Hmm. It's not date someone your own age. I'd say it's date someone your own maturity. And that opens up a whole new conversation. Because for me, there's such a thing where age and maturity don't always match up. I know people who are way up in years who have the mentality, and I don't mean this as childlike behavior, but childish behavior, as in being like, uh, I'm trying to have a word for it. It's a place of pl being where they're not acting, not acting their age. <laughs> But there are also people who are, and I know quite a few people like this, who are probably, how they're presented, who they are thought of being, who basically people think are 10, 15 years younger than they really are because of the way that they are in their lives. So the thing is, what I'm aware of, there's, a, there's two different things going on here. Independent of chronological age, there's a maturity, consciousness, awareness type age. There's also a vitality, health, vigor, it's a fancy word. Um, presentation. Also, both of those don't necessarily match their chronological age. So if you date somebody your own age, are you really dating somebody you're equal to? And again, these are 
questions to provoke thought, to inspire you to think about this, and probably to hopefully type some questions, comments in, in the broadcast, because this is one of those topics that gets interesting. There are, and I'm, and I'm, <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. I was feeling this thing about pleading my case. I'm like, no, that's not where I'm going on this. I want to make sure that this is out for you to think about. Because I watch people together where the partnership is perfectly looking on screen or on paper, and you know people like this, where they look perfect because it's a very two-dimensional presentation. But in their personal lives and in their relationship lives, there's actually no connection whatsoever. It's just for appearances. And this is true on different parts of the age spectrum. So when you're with somebody who is... Okay, I'm going to talk about... All right, I'm sorry. Okay. I've been on a few dates recently with women who are of the same chronological age as me, yet they feel 10 years older. I'm just being blunt. Because I watched that disparity happening between what matching. Marsha, okay. And oh, by the way, this is Facebook Live first. It goes onto YouTube later on. So if you're wondering who I'm talking to and responding to, it's people who put comments up on my Facebook Live. So now you know where they're coming from. But I'm going to read what's been written. Uh, Marsha, nice to see you, Marsha. Thanks for being a broadcast, by the way. You say you agree, independent of chronological age, but some match of emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual being. Absolutely. And that's that's kind of my point of this, is that there, there seems to be this prejudice, is one way of looking at it, and views from another point of view, where there's a dis, disparity of looks, sorry, disparity of opinion of how it looks when you're with somebody of a different age. Because what it really comes down to is that sense of compatibility on the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual levels which isn't always age 40, age 40, or whatever that is. And so my question to you is, and this is what I'm gonna leave you with, because I'm gonna keep this fairly short. Um, yeah, it's a short broadcast, I wanna provoke some things here. Is what is it that you're looking for in a relationship? And is it tied to a particular age? Or is it tied to a particular maturity? Because those two things are very different. And in the work I'm doing more and more, I'm realizing there is a piece missing because there's this rule book people are going around with, whereas their partner must be a certain demographic specification. So they're tied to their color of the skin, their height, their location, their religious affiliation, um, their age. And some of those things, for some people I know, have been thrown out the window because they've seen and met somebody who was so far outside their frame of what they thought was right, but there's a compatibility and it's not just chemistry or soulmate stuff, which I don't want to get into in this conversation, but it's a compatibility that fits together really well. And sometimes you've got to be willing to let go of the structure, the demographic criteria, to see what's possible to have attraction for something that really fits. That's been one of my lessons, by the way. I mentioned, yeah, I need to finish up with the thought. Okay, so I mentioned I've been on a few dates over the last month or so with women who were of the similar chronological age to me and we are so out of alignment and it was such an interesting um it wasn't so much awareness as witnessing that to recognize that i'm i don't fit that just the way it lines up now oh, jermaine nice to see you in broadcast too good to see you sir excellent marsha those keys com those key components surely help to make up the whole being of us as individuals yes agreed absolutely and that's the thing is that we've been, well, let me put this way. <laughs> the dating apps and dating sites are so built on the, on the, chron, the chron, um, chronological, the chronographic, demographic information that mashes together. If you've been on dating apps, most of the compatibility stuff, it's, you've got to put in what age range you're interested in, the height range, where they live, how much distance from where you are, that sort of stuff. Which is why it's so hard to find a good match on the dating apps. Oh, this is getting interesting. I thought it was going to be shorter than it was, but it's going to be a longer broadcast. The reality is that when we find compatibility about individual matching up with each other, it may be at the same age, then again, it might not. And so when you go on these dating apps, are you really going to find the one you're looking for if you fill out this, the demographic criteria that limit the spectrum of what's possible to a height range within three or four inches, an age range within five, five years, a location within 10 miles, and religious affiliation that is close enough to yours? Maybe, maybe not. But my question to you is, do you know what you really want and do you know who you really are to somebody who you're looking for? I'll give you some questions to play with, haven't I? This one's a deep one because what I'm watching out there in relationships is there's a presumption of what's right and what's wrong. 
And the truth is there's much. <laughs> Thank you, Jermaine. Nice to see you too. Um, all is well. Um, there's such a, th a piece of this conversation we haven't had. And so I want to throw this out there, not just about age, but about the whole um, limited window we choose to look through for relationships and dating. Because there's such a, um, what's we're looking for? Well, it's marketing in a way, but it's this assumption that you've got to be a certain fit to be, find the right person to fit this way, and that's where it's going to be tough luck for anything else. And that to me is an extremely um, limited view. And at the same time, what I mentioned at the beginning about this 50 year old French guy, that 25 year gap, that's pushing the outlook maybe on the other end to extreme. But I want, I'm looking to throw this out there as a thing to think about is to be aware of what you've been choosing as your partnership possibilities. And if you're looking at relationship visions, I, my Rocket 2019 program, yeah, I'm gonna drop that hint in, of course. Rocket 2019 workbook is a great way to start looking at your year. And you can put in there about relationships or it could be anything about, it could be business, could be, in fact, I recommend you look at all, I've got uh, 12 areas in my, the life wheel that's in the, in the program, or in the workbook rather, that explains which areas you wanna focus on to work on. So it could be a relationship. But this thing is, you can focus on that, and again, I'll put the link in the comments for that, by the way. The thing about focusing on that is, are you looking for, <laughs> that's an interesting term. There's something, I, uh, there's a thing called form versus essence. There's something I learned in a workshop back in 86, 87, where we were looking at how to present information that was either done in a very structural form, or was, this, or was it presented from an essential essence and energetic presentation, you could feel it. And that's the strange thing about relationships a lot of times. People look at the form and the presentation and make it, I'll show it, perfect fit, that's going to be okay. But the internal part is, is there an energetic match? Is there a feeling of, um, f of essence that connects between the hearts and creates connection? So, what's that, Marsha? So Abraham Hicks says, I like you pretty well. Let's see what we might have to share and learn together. Tons more fun and viability. Yeah, that's a good one. That's the thing is, is it does start in a way with having a certain level of attraction, which can be a like, not necessarily got to have it, you know, but that's, a, that's another level of conversation, which I'm not going to do this time. <laughs> so I think that's made my point clear enough is to think about this for yourself. This is not an answer provided video this time. This is a provocative question, inspiring, encouraging you to think about this, because frankly, this is a question we haven't talked about much before. In fact, this is something maybe you haven't considered before because for so many people, dating is done through this mechanical box of a dating app that limits your choices. And what I'm realizing as I'm talking about this and what's been provoked and responded to, thank you for your input, by the way, for Marsha and, and for and Jermaine, there's more to this than meets the eye. And your choices may in fact be more um, variable than you've been given possibility to. So. Your homework tonight, yes, I'm going to give you your homework on a Sunday night. Oh my God, how can I do that to you? Is one to look at your own choices and what you've been choosing up to now. And is that going to work for you in the future? Or do you want to expand your possibilities and your horizons? Do you want to be more open to what's possible? And keep in mind that you want to be matching energetically more than you want to through the form factor because it might be different. Secondly, um, if you haven't seen me before, by the way, I do these broadcasts at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. Um, unless I notify you otherwise and put it on my Facebook page. So make sure you're following me to watch them. But these talks are usually about um, how to be more effective, more successful and more loving in life and in relationship and all those good bits as well. So I want to know where you find the replays. Again, I'll put a link in the comments for my uh, Rocket 2019 workbook because it'll change your life, especially change your year because it's about 2019. Um, replays, this is my Facebook Live that goes out first on Facebook and then goes on to my YouTube channel and then on my podcast. I'll give you the replay links. My personal page is where I start off from, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby, if you want to follow me there. The replay has gone to my business page, which I invite you to like, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. I'll get to the YouTube thing because I must just put a comment in. What did you say here? Men tend to pass over before women. So opposite to typical match, women need to be with younger men. Oh, so you're saying that basically men die faster than women do, so women should date younger? That's an interesting perspective. <laughs> I know it's just saying, but still, yeah, interesting. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to say yay or nay on that one, because um, I'm a guy. But it's interesting because I watch my parents' relationship. Cause my mother passed away in 2012. My dad's still going. He's actually moving into a, um, home, a, a, caring, a care home now. And he didn't plan on leaving after her. So different way than what you said. Anyway, so finishing up, because I want to get, <laughs> get this done. 
the replays on YouTube, you can go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Silby, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's I think it's, it's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby, I think. And you can subscribe to that. And then in there is a playlist called Messages for the Masculine. All of these are there, so you can search through them, choose titles, replay them, have fun with them. And also my podcast, which is on iTunes, called Messages from the Masculine. You can subscribe to that. You can download the audio versions of this and watch them or listen to them when you're driving around doing other things. If you have any questions, comments, please reach out to me. Send me a message if you want some help over social media or if you want to go to my website, check it out, which is barryselby.com. Again, um, and in fact, the second link is the Rocket 2019 program. If you want to look at it there, and I'll put the link in the comments a little bit later on tonight. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being with me. I hope this has given you some food for thought. That's usually my, my intention. And I will see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, consider what I said. It might just open up your eyes to possibilities this week. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.